Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and we are quilting web fill today. And I'm gonna stitch this part of the way on my home sewing machine, and then we'll switch to the long arm and see if this will work as a long arm quilting design too. So it starts out with just a long wiggly line. You're gonna go back into the middle and then veer off in another direction, another wiggly line. And notice how I can speed up whenever I'm stitching out initially, and then I need to slow down as I travel stitch back into the middle. That just keeps my stitching nice and tidy, helps that travel stitching to not look too messy. So how many little lines for the center of our spider web? That's entirely up to you, how close you want those lines to be together and how big you want your spider web shape to be. Uh, so that looks pretty good to me. I like that. I'm right back in the center and this is where we're gonna start our little spiral. So I stitched out just a bit and now I'm gonna stitch a bouncy spiral. I kind of dip down and then come back up as I hit those lines I previously stitched. So here you can see it just a little bit better as I get out from the center of the spider web, just bouncing from line to line. Very, very simple. Now you can bring those lines closer together or further apart. It's kind of fun to play with. And you can also put your foot down. You can get some speed going because whenever you're doing the spiraling part, uh, really, you're just hitting those lines. It's not, you don't need to be as accurate and as perfect as whenever you are travel stitching. So here I'm gonna hit these lines and you might run into this issue and that is that some of your lines are extending longer. You can leave that or you can go around one more time. It's entirely up to you. I think I'm just gonna line up and hit that point and call that spider web done. Okay, so how do we move on with the design? You're just gonna start from one of the tips, just like where I am now, and you're gonna wiggle off in another direction, new long wiggly line. It's that simple. Then you just decide where the center is, stitch back to it, and veer off with another wiggly line. Now, when doing web fill, I kinda like my little lines to line up, but they don't have to. You know, having the, the tip of one line line up with the tip of the next one, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. It's just one of those fun things. And whenever I'm working with something like this, and obviously I end up with some weird areas, like this area right here that's open, I just cut it in half. You can put your finger over the design, see what it looks like, and that's what I would stitch in that little section. So get your wiggly lines, it's kind of your foundation set, and then it's very, very easy just stitching that wiggly spiral, that little bouncy spiral all the way out, and that completes the design. So now that we've stitched this on my Eversone Spirit 20 little home sewing machine, let's see if this design will work on a long arm. So I'm on my Cunique 21X Elite, stitching my long wiggly line. And my goal here, it's not gonna be perfect travel stitching. My goal is to stitch that and then make that same shape with my hands. So I'm focusing on the arm movement and duplicating the arm movement. Otherwise, if I try and really get slow and travel stitch perfectly, I mean, I might be able to do it, but eventually I'm gonna veer off. So I'm gonna allow this to be messy and be okay with that. So now it's time to spiral and I'm just hitting those lines, bouncing, dipping in between the lines. That kind of gives it that spider web effect. And see how fast I can go. I love this. The increased speed of my Cutie 21X Elite. I gotta say that's probably one of my favorite things about it. It's just that I can stitch so much faster and obviously so much bigger. This is stitched on, you know, pretty much a half of an inch scale. You know, sometimes in some places there's an inch between those lines, but generally this is gonna leave your quilt feeling very nice and soft. All right, so now we're gonna branch out with a new shape. And I think I'm gonna kind of bend it over this way, fill in this whole area. And again, I'm forming that line, and then I'm just trying to make this same identical hand movement. So I pull that over and make that curve. I'm not stitching it slow. I'm not trying to stay on the line. I'm just trying to make the same movement. And if I 
make that movement accurately, I will stitch on the line. So I think that's kind of cool. That's something I've never really thought about with free motion quilting on my long arm. Just trying to get my elbows and my wrists and uh, my arms to just form the same sort of pattern. All right, so now let's do these bounces. Notice I speed up and then slow down as I come closer to the line. Let's try and maintain the same steady speed throughout. And I'll be honest, that doesn't feel all that natural to me and see how I just got a little wobble right there. I think speeding up and slowing down, that just is what works best for me. But give it a good try. Try and stitch at a slow, steady speed, and then try and stitch like I'm stitching, where you increase and decrease your speed as needed. So there we go, I'm hitting those tips. I am getting a little bit of a wobble because I know my uh, ruler base is hitting my red snappers a little bit. But overall, I am extremely pleased with that, guys. I think more practice, definitely, but web fill is definitely gonna work on your long arms as well as your home sewing machines. So no matter which type of machine you got, give this a try, enjoy stitching web fill. Until next time, let's go quilt.